think the reason that people are getting involved with this is they still believe in the promise of America. And at the end of the day, they just want a better life. The politicians in Washington today have really screwed things up. I mean, it's bad. We have some serious problems. You know, it reminds me of a story. A long time ago, there was a very powerful king. And in his great kingdom, there was this one village that was really kind of exceptional. These villagers lived in a great big village way out on the edge of the kingdom. And these people loved their king. They were good people. They worked hard. They educated themselves. They read lots of books and pamphlets. They traveled widely. And they really studied history. They were informed. But you know, the king never really treated these villagers very well. Living so far away from the central kingdom, he and his court thought of these villagers as dumb country folk that he could easily manipulate. And after a while, the king started getting more and more greedy, acting more and more like a tyrant. He and his court started to concoct new schemes for taking a greater portion of the villagers' goods and treasure. Yet he continued to treat them like they were inferior, second-class citizens. He sent members of his court to rule over them with more and more control and less and less freedom, never giving them any say in how they were ruled. And you know what happened? The same thing that always happens in these situations. They eventually started to fight back. First they sent petitions, then they organized and protested. When that didn't work, they started to break certain laws. Laws that infringed on their liberty and freedom. But the king was incapable of learning. It never occurred to him that he was the source of the problem. That it was his oppressive rule that created an increasingly unruly village. Instead, he tried to crack down. He sent in more guards with greater liberties over the people. But these people were strong, and they fought back even harder. And after their efforts to influence the king failed, they eventually raised an army. Finally, they went to war, and the villagers miraculously defeated the king's great army. And from that moment on, they began to rule themselves. And they really did it right, too. They never had a king. Instead, they shared power with each other. They listened to each other's concerns. They even looked after each other without ever burdening one another too much. And their leaders, they voluntarily stepped down from power after a reasonable time of service. And these villagers really made it work for a long, long time. In fact, it worked for a couple hundred years. Guess what happened? Lo and behold, the leaders in the village started to act more and more like who? You guessed it, the king and his court. They only cared about themselves. They stopped listening to the people. They only did what they had to do to make sure that they stayed in power. And before long, things started to spiral out of control. And the villagers, they started to revolt. Sound familiar? Of course, I'm not really talking about a group of villagers. This is the story of the tyranny of the British king and the birth of the United States. But it's also about where we find ourselves today. The degree to which we echo this history of oppressive rule now is alarming. We're at the point where our ruling elites, including the leadership of the Democratic and Republican parties, are no longer really concerned about the interests of the people. Their only concern now is amassing wealth and staying in power. Come on, I'll explain what I mean and how we can fix it.
I think the problem is pretty clear. The people no longer rule. The voice of the vast majority of Americans has been utterly silenced. The United States Congress now exists only to serve itself and the ruling oligarchs, which includes the big money billionaires and Wall Street elites, multinational corporations, and the most powerful special interest groups. Our government is not serving the middle class, and it's certainly not serving the working poor. Whatever you want to call it, plutocracy, oligarchy, corporatocracy, it's not government by or for the people. And it's the professional politicians that have allowed this to happen. We know all this because the signs are everywhere. First and foremost is economic tyranny. Economic inequality in the U.S. today is at catastrophic levels. To be sure, a fair amount of inequality is necessary and good. But at these extreme levels, it's a dry forest looking for a matchstick. Furthermore, upward mobility in the U.S. is now ranked lower than any other advanced nation in the world, except one, the U.K. Remember the British king? What's worse, the middle class is being eviscerated. In fact, the middle class has now been steadily shrinking for over a half a century. Meanwhile, the gap between the salaries of the CEO and the average employee is at an all-time high, and it too continues to increase. And what are the super rich doing with all that excess cash? Why, they're buying power, of course which allows them to get even richer and even more powerful without adding any value to society at all. This accumulation of power leads to yet another form of tyranny, political tyranny. Our political system is now completely controlled by big money. The middle class and working poor are no longer represented at all. They have no influence, no voice. How is this possible? First, if not buying the office itself or handpicking the candidates, the super rich are buying access, loyalty, and even the votes of politicians through political action committees and enormous campaign contributions at a level that the average citizen can't even begin to contemplate, especially now thanks to the recent rulings of the Supreme Court. With billions and billions of dollars being spent by the rich and powerful, the voice of the American people can no longer be heard. Leading political science research now proves what we have long known. The middle class no longer has a voice. We now have zero influence on our own government. For the middle and working classes, we're back to where this nation started. Taxation without representation. Now to be fair, the solution is not to demonize the rich, many of whom are equally concerned about America's slide toward plutocracy which will create civil unrest, political instability, and dire economic consequences for us all. Besides, it's not just the tycoons and plutocrats with their too-big-to-fail banks and massive multinational corporate conglomerates that created this situation. The bloated, increasingly corrupt, and abusive federal government is itself the other half of the problem. Government wouldn't be owned by big money if it didn't put itself up for sale. This leads to the third form of tyranny, the tyranny of our corporate controlled government. And what's the evidence here? First and foremost, there's Wall Street and the financial industrial complex, which several presidents have warned us about and the recent financial crisis has made even more glaringly obvious. And this includes the sheer existence of banks that are too big to fail, a financial services industry that writes its own rules, feeds off the American people like a parasite and pays fines, but never does time for massive, blatant corruption and fraud. In addition to the powerful banking lobby, this rigged, blood-sucking system includes members of the House and Senate Banking Committees and the U.S. Treasury, but also the Federal Reserve itself, which is completely lacking in oversight and accountability. 
Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. The idea that a handful of big private banks should control the U.S. economy without congressional oversight, without a legitimate public audit, without any real accountability or transparency whatsoever is a slap in the face to any self-respecting democratic society. The truth is that Wall Street has both the executive and the legislature in their back pocket to the point that the risk of another financial crisis is actually greater now than it was in 2008. And then there's the military industrial complex which George Washington and Dwight Eisenhower, a Republican, both warned us about. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. To be clear, I think most Americans are in favor of a strong military. We're proud of our military and intelligence communities. That is not the problem. The problem is when they're controlled by corporate interests and driven by the insatiable hunger for profits. Make no mistake, the need for the American people to reassert control over their own government extends to the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA, which, thanks to Congress and the Patriot Act, has become a rogue agency that needs to be reined in immediately. Listen, using tax dollars to spy on American citizens without a warrant is itself a grave threat to free, open, and democratic society. I mean, how long before spying gets political? Remember Hoover? This has to stop now. Transparency and accountability are not nice principles to have. They are the foundation of our freedom. As John F. Kennedy once said, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. But this is just the beginning. The fact is that corruption and regulatory capture now runs rampant in the federal government. Basically, government agencies like the FDA, the EPA, the FCC, and the SEC, to name a few of the most egregious offenders, are now completely controlled by the industries that they were created to regulate. In fact, there is a virtual revolving door between regulatory agencies, industry, and the U.S. Congress, where these people all act in each other's best interests, but at great cost and detriment to the American people. That's not how capitalism works. In fact, that's not capitalism at all. That's corporatism. That's rule by the corporations. Now let me be clear. Every single one of these problems is a threat to democracy. Taken together, they represent a vicious, lethal cancer on the body politic. Global history is clear. Capitalism has proven to be the most effective economic system. But it's a wild animal that must be tamed. Therefore, to save democracy, we must save capitalism from its own excesses. As Adam Smith, the father of capitalism, made clear, the greatest threat to strong, competitive free markets are the corporations themselves. We have to address the root problem. So, what's the solution? Frankly, the best, most exciting solution is pretty simple, but it's not going to be easy. We need your help. In essence, we need to reduce the power of both big government and big money and return that power to the American people. Just imagine how much better America could be if the people truly ruled. If all this sounds like a dream, then you've bought into the propaganda that politicians have been spewing to keep themselves in power, and you're forgetting what our founders achieved when they birthed this great nation. So how can we do this? 
simple. We need to create a viable third party that is strictly focused on one big thing, giving power back to the people. By raising money and running candidates under our own banner, the Progressive Bull Moose Party, pledged to our own principles, we can end the era of big money, big government, rule by the super rich, and return power to the people. We can take this country back from the professional politicians. We can take the reins of power away from the ruling elites. We can rewrite the rules of the game. We can resurrect the middle class and fulfill the people's vision of the American dream. It's not too late, and it is possible. If you would just join with us now, I promise you, we can and we will change this country in a way that our so-called leaders in Washington could never have imagined. Listen, I'm asking you, help us make this happen. Join us, donate, volunteer, become a member of our party, make a contribution, consider running for a seat in the House or Senate as a progressive bull moose candidate.